Welcome back. Each year, Texas spends about $25 billion on Medicaid. That's almost a quarter of the entire state budget. This week, we caught up with two lawmakers who know this topic well. Senator Leticia Bandepute, the Democratic nominee for Lieutenant Governor, who is also a pharmacist, and Dr. John Zerwas, a Republican member of the House who practices medicine in Houston. We, we know that there's a significant amount of fraud, uh, not to the point that it is causing the program to collapse, but certainly it's an amount of money that we know that if we could recoup, we could put to much more effective use. And so there's kind of two entities involved in this, the Office of the Inspector General, uh, which is separate from Health and Human Services, which has a whole program dedicated towards identifying patterns of, of fraud that allows them to go in there and then recoup these payments. And then you have the Office of the Attorney General, which is also very effective in identifying some of the uh, fraudulent activities that go on. Both of those groups have been quite effective in recouping millions and millions of dollars um, that ultimately uh, can be used uh, for the use or purpose for, which which is the delivery of health care services. Well, what we know is that the legislature passed uh, Senate Bill 8, and with that was the uh, idea to look at fraud, waste, and abuse. Uh, and it has been very, very exciting to see how our Health and Human Services Agency has implemented that. It's really looking at contracted management uh, to look at the anomalies. I mean, we know uh, from payment billing systems when something is just getting, uh, so you've got these outliers. But what most of the focus was today was not just about Medicaid, but our health care system. We know that when it's waste, it's not using the data, it's uh, understanding that Texas used to lead the nation in readmissions to hospitals 30 days post-discharge. That costs everybody money, not just folks in the Medicaid system, but employers who pay for, for their employees' health insurance. So what we, what we discussed today is how to work better, how to use the data to find out what really saves money and improves outcomes. What types of things do you think that the legislature should focus on when it comes to Medicaid fraud in the next session? Yeah, that's a good point, you know, and, and I think we understand that if we invest in people uh, that can go after payments or, or services that weren't appropriately provided and paid for, we can do that. Uh, but that's a pretty sizable investment, and it takes money out of the system, whereas we want to keep it in the system. I think that one of the things that we should look at, and we've looked at it before but not probably effectively uh, executed anything on it, is what can we do up front to identify you know, the activities so that we never let the money get out. Uh, now, a lot of what's going to happen in this area will occur at, among our managed care companies in the private sector. And they are incentivized to, you know, clearly uh, diminish the amount of fraud and abuse that occurs out there. Um, because if they can, then they can keep the money, you know, into the, the managed care company itself and have it available to deliver uh, the services that are intended to be delivered. We know uh, that health care is a huge part of uh, productivity in this state. It's uh, part of the economy, but it also has direct workforce issues. People who are healthy are more productive at work. If we can make sure that families uh, take that responsibility to stay healthy, then it cuts our costs uh, way more than we could do with fraud or, or abuse. It's the waste in the system. It's making sure that we make smart decisions about our lifestyle, about our choices. So I think the legislature will look at those things, but actually payment reform. So if you pay uh, an insurance company, whether it's a managed care, on keeping people well rather than paying them for just the times they go to the hospital or to the doctors, what sort of system turnaround do we have? We know that other countries that have a lower cost per enrollee uh, and better outcomes really focus on the prevention side. Uh, so it's a fine balance. Uh, what I think the legislature is going to focus on is uh, this discussion on Medicaid expansion. We know that Governor Perry's decision not to expand Medicaid has really said no to 200,000 jobs. We had over 20 Chamber of Commerce uh, sending us resolutions to find a way to do that Medicaid expansion. We also know that Republican states with very conservative legislatures and Republican governors found a way to draw down those federal dollars and use a marketplace, a private marketplace,
place to help insure those folks in their states that were uninsured. Texas is exceptional. We're supposed to be smarter than other people. We could have found a way rather than the just say no. Uh, it was a very bad business decision and I think we're going to look at that. How, how do we cover more people in a way that respects taxpayers? When people say we're not going to spend any Texas dollars on that, what they don't realize is about 85 percent of the people who live in Texas pay for health care in the form of property taxes to their hospital districts. So it may be very disingenuous for the state and the state legislature and our leadership to beat their chest and boast about not using any more taxpayer dollars for Medicaid when in fact those people are paying for health care at their local level. So let's respect the taxpayers. Understand that it's not just the state dollars, it's their local property taxes. When we're honest and transparent about that, then we can come to the table and look at what's best for our state and how do we use those dollars that all of us pay in IRS taxes and bring them back to the state in a manner that is cost effective, that isn't fraudulent, that's not without abuse, and that strengthens our economy. But how, with this type of issue, do you get both parties, Republicans and Democrats, to agree on a plan? Well, first of all, you've got to have the willingness to sit down. What I know is with my 23 years in the legislature, I've always been willing to sit down with people at the table and, and people who I call sometimes strange bedfellows, you know, a very opposing views. But they have the same goal in mind, which is to respect taxpayers, understand how we can do this better, more effective. And there's a way. There's a way to do this. Uh, it was a very bad business decision not to cover uh, those individuals when it would have cost Texas taxpayers very little. They're already paying at the local level. They're already paying IRS taxes. Other conservative states found a way to do this. Texas can too. I think that actually the, it's a good point and typically you know uh, you know Republicans versus Democrats on this issue you do see some difference there but there's probably more things we agree on than we disagree on and I think this is one that absolutely we would agree on uh, you know none of us uh, want money going out for fraudulent purposes and not being used to for the provision of health care um, now we may differ on how much money we have available to spend to do that uh, but I think clearly, you know, we are of the opinion that, uh, you know, let's make sure that the money that we appropriate is used for the purposes that it's appropriated for. And if we have fraudulent activity, whether you're a Republican or whether you're a Democrat, you're going to want to find a way to either prevent that or to recoup those payments that were made. Still ahead, our health care roundtable, Lee Spangler from the Texas Medical Association and Becca Aronson from our partner, the Texas Tribune, when we return.